and welcome to the 2013 edition of Journey to the Throne. For this year's competition, I can assure you viewers that it is a tough competition between the seven ladies vying for the Miss Dominica title. And right now we're joined by last but not least, contestant number seven, Miss Dana Matthew, representing Canefield. Dana, thank you for joining us. No problem. Okay, so everyone wants to know, and this is always the question that I ask first, why did you decide to enter this competition? Well, I've always admired the art of pageantry since I've been a little girl, and I always wanted that opportunity, and I got that chance when I took part in the Miss Dominica State College, and I actually won that pageant, and it really gave me that extra motivation to take part on the big stage, and from then, because it can be very different yeah from the audience and actually being in it mm -hmm. and actually experiencing it. I must say I enjoyed it a lot and that really gave me the extra push to go forward. Great. Um, how prepared are you for this pageant? Well, apart from our three days a week practices of the Queen Show Committee, I also have my own practices with my team and they are really a great team. They really give me that foundation mm. and I believe for the next a few 20 days now remaining, I think that I'm going to put in a lot more work and I'm just going to enjoy myself on the night. When I first met you, I said that you were a quiet star because she was so quiet. Um, what can Dominicans expect from you on the night of the show? Well, a lot of persons know me as a quiet person, but mm -hmm. I always say I know when to speak and I know when to be quiet. And for sure on the night you're going to see difference, you're going to see talent, you're going to see enthusiasm, you're going to see someone who is just going to be in her element and they should definitely come out on the night of the show. I'm sure that this journey has changed you in some way. Um, tell us about that aspect of you that has changed through partaking in this pageant? It has definitely made me more aware that persons are looking at me, especially in my school because I'm a teacher at the convent high school and the students, they are really looking. They're, they will say, Miss, we saw you on TV, you were in a swimsuit and they're really just excited for you as much as you're excited for yourself. And it has forced me to be that role model that I know I am. Mm -hmm. And it has really made me be aware that, okay, I need to dress decently, I need to speak decently, I need to be that person that they see as, as an example for them. Okay, so you mentioned teaching at the convent high school. What challenges do you think our young people face today? I definitely think they are a bit confused as to who are their role models. They're not too sure who they should look up to because a lot of the celebrities, they display how we should speak, how we should dress, and they are unsure, especially with the media and television, with internet, they are unsure as to how to be as young girls. And I think that is something they face. I think that's something they sort of become confused with because they don't know who to be as a person in, in any situation. Okay. And how do you, as a teacher and a role model, encourage your girls at the convent high school to, to look up to somebody who, who lives a meaningful or purposeful life? I definitely say every day as a teacher is like a lesson. I try my best, apart from me teaching English and principles of business, to tell them, okay, this is not the way you sit. This is not the way you, you talk to someone. This mm -hmm. is not the way you shout to someone. If we're speaking next to each other, there's no reason why you should raise your voice that high. Right. So I try to make, apart from the academics, I try to teach them little morals that they can instill in their own lives because, I mean, apart from when they leave home, they, go, they come to school. Mm -hmm. So they want that model, they want that example for someone to really show them the way. You consider yourself a role model, yes. as you just said. What's your stance on abortion or and abstinence? I definitely think that in the situation you may it's very different to be looking than to actually be in the situation and I think if someone believes that in the whatever it is that they are facing that they cannot deal with if it's an unwanted pregnancy, then they should do, they should make the best possible decision. Um, I mean, it's all up to the person. Everyone has different experiences, and I would leave it up to the person to make an informed decision as to what they want to do. Okay. If you could change one thing about Dominica, what would it be and why? I would definitely say 
the people have to be a little bit more warming, a little bit more welcoming because, I mean, even as a Queen contestant, I mean, they, they want a lot from us and they expect a lot from us and persons tend to be a bit negative at times and I think we need to pull each other up rather than bring each other down and that is definitely it's just saying a nice word, saying something positive rather than always being negative, especially I look at the DNO comments and so forth when it really just can really disappoint someone when they look at it so I yeah. think generally we need to be a more supportive people and I'm not saying that we are not but in some cases it's really saddening yeah it's quite discouraging yes. really what would you say is your best quality I definitely think my best quality is patience mm -hmm. and I've really learned to develop that as a teacher because you deal with so many different personalities in the classroom and you have to know how to just take a deep breath and tell the students okay this is not the way you're supposed to behave mm -hmm. and I definitely think patience is something I've really just it's my strong suit and it has really um, helped me even in the pageant because being a teacher and then having to go to my also different activities that I have to do it can become very very hard at times it can become very straining mm. but I believe once you become a patient person then it helps you along the way to really deal with what is coming at you what would you say is your worst quality? I think sometimes I may speak too quickly, like sometimes, well, I want to be a lawyer. So my father tells me I'm a bit too argumentative. I sometimes too, even when he's just talking, like a normal conversation, I always see it as a defensive conversation. I always want to be right in everything. Mm. So I definitely think sometimes I just need to relax. I just know this is a usual conversation. I don't need to be, have an opinion every right. time. Mm -hmm. So. Yes, I definitely think that. This month is Drug Abuse Prevention Month. Mm -hmm. uh, is As a woman, as a teacher, as a role model, is this something you would advocate for and why? Uh, this is something I would definitely advocate for. I really think that drugs is something that sets you on the wrong path in the first place. It's a way to get fast money and persons do not realize that a lot of even the murders that are happening are drug related at times. So I think for sure drugs is not the way. It doesn't solve anything and we should really go back to our family if we see ourselves having to use drugs. Go back to our community who is really the foundation that we need when we are facing a difficult time. Okay, very well said. What's the best advice your parents have given you? My parents, they have always told me to be an upright lady in all situations, despite what persons may be saying, despite how difficult a situation may be, always keep your calm and always just, when you can't do it, go to God and He will always solve all your problems. He's always there for your comfort, for your understanding. How, how important is God in your life? Definitely, He is everything to me from the time I wake up to the time I go to bed. And I think having God in your life is something that everyone needs. And it's something because at the end of the day, it's you and your God, whoever you believe in, whoever is your utmost person. And it's that you look up to, that's, that really gets you. Did I answer it again? <coughs> okay, take two. How important is God in your life? I will definitely say that God is everything to me. He has really given me that comfort that I needed, especially in every difficult situation that I have become faced in. And I've realized that we can do nothing without Him. And without His strength, without His support, without Him giving us little signs as to really what direction to go, then we are ultimately nothing. Mm. Who or what inspires you? I would definitely say my mother inspires me every day. She's an inspiration to me because she's really just a strong woman in everything that she does. And she shows me that even though you may be facing whatever it is in your life, that you can go to work, you can put your best foot forward and you can really achieve your goals at the end of the day. Where do you see yourself in the next five years? Well, I want to pursue a career in law and I guess by five years is the amount of time it takes. So I'd maybe be coming back to Dominica, hoping to pursue my career in that um, field. Okay. Wealth, beauty, brains. Rank these in order of importance to you and tell me why. I would say brains. 
wealth than beauty. Why? Okay. Brains because ultimately you need to have some form of common sense in your head to achieve the wealth. Wealth because at the end of the day, although persons may save money, you need money to move in life and then, I mean, you could be an ugly person and still be happy. So I'd put beauty last because beauty is something not really an outer appearance, but it's inner. So you can be so beautiful inside and outside. So I definitely say brains first, then wealth and then beauty. Tell us a little about your sponsor. Yes, my sponsor is Domac and they have really from the get-go they have supported me and I really just want to thank them for really seeing the potential in me, really seeing me as their queen already and I really want to thank them for that. Each contestant has a platform, something that is dear to them. So I would like you to tell your viewers about your platform and why it's important to you. My platform is the empowerment of young girls and women. And why this is important? As we see now, our young ladies are really the bearers of our, of our future. And they really need that role model. And I see it every day as a teacher in an all-girls school where the girls are looking towards someone to be that example. And as I said before, sometimes they look towards an outside figure, the celebrities, who most of the time they live a double life and who they are on the upfront, that's not who they are in private so right now in Dominica I really want to tell my young girls that we need to become more unified we need to become more supportive of our friends and family because as girls we are friends as well even though I may not know you I can see you on the road and I can tell you okay that's not the right thing to do so definitely that um, platform has really struck home with me especially after I was given the opportunity to be the feature speaker for last year's International Women's Day that really just gave me an insight as to how girls really look towards someone to look up to. The Empowerment for Young Girls and Women is Dana Matthews' platform. She represents the community of Canefield. Be sure to join her on the eve of February 8th where I'm sure she'll be captivating you and leaving you wanting more. This is it for the 2013 edition of Journey to the Throne. I'm Pearl Fontaine. Thank you for watching.